jump into the Netflix show that'll be coming out later this year. Yeah. And buying London. Like, do you feel like when people maybe will see you first first time, they'll see this kind of quite confident. We we you see the the little reel that's out there and you can like, yeah, I'm putting all my money on the line and putting my purse like That's true though. <laughs> <laughs> that part's yeah. that that's, really that's true. true. <laughs> but that that personality, but then they, they they don't know who you are. Do you do you kind of a second guess yourself on that side? Obviously, you're on social media and you've always kind of put yourself out there. Yeah. You're one of the first to do that, to be honest. But people have such a different perspective of like, they see one side, but they don't see the real side. They're going to see the, the end product that actually of money. Yeah. makes the deal happen. The people that actually holds on to their relationships, like even us messaging, like, yeah, because you quite clearly are a very humble person. People wouldn't say that about me growing up. You know, people are always going to have opinions about you. Uh, I'm definitely more polished than I was before, but my foundation remains the same. Mm. I think it's very easy to get carried away with my job and now people's perspective of me on on Netflix. You know, we've we've got that show because we're talented, we're hardworking, we're yep. determined, we've created this opportunity, and we have insane desire to do something really special with our lives to tell a story. Yeah. Not because I want to buy a boat tomorrow or or a Lamborghini. That's not how I roll. Um, I want to create more opportunity for people and I love people. And that's the only way that I have been successful is because I really love people. Um, so when's the documentary coming out? So it's coming out in May. Yes. Yeah, uh, yeah. So click coming soon on, <laughs> on, uh, on, on Netflix so you can watch it and it'll give you some insights to what we do. Obviously not everything. Yeah. It's, it is an entertainment show at the end of the day. Um, and it will show you a side. Is that and is that your first insighting into, I'm going to say the TV world? No, you no, it's not. <laughs> I've done quite a bit of TV. Yeah, yeah. Um, it, it, it's funny how people do put you in a box in our industry. Yes. Probably like every industry, like your industry. Like yeah. you, you were dancing and I was like, wow, this is amazing because I, I learned how to tap. My mum put me through the ringer with stuff. You can right? tap dance. So my my mum wanted to find a talent in me, right? <laughs> she was desperate she to, to find a talent in thing, right? She, yeah, I did everything. I mean, so I what did number tap. was selling did, property on so, that so, list? No, it was nowhere near. What are you talking about? My mum wanted me to be a doctor or a tennis yeah. player. You know, that's what it was. Secure money, be a doctor. Yeah, yeah. I played the violin. I tap dance and and in truth I was pretty good at all this sort of yeah. stuff and I love dancing so what episode's the talent show on the Netflix no 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 no, no, no. <laughs> but but I would watch Strictly Come Dancing and I'd love it in particularly the, the Argentine tango I love yeah, that dance very sexy right? dance it's very sexy mm, dance mm. And, I, and I was and I was just I thought it was wicked that you were on this show and I loved it and I loved the fact that you were on social channels and doing your thing and I was it was you know it was admirable and I'm sure that people put you in a box mm. when, you, when you start your Do career you know the irony now you just said that I've never ever said this on camera before but on Strictly, I was one of the first ones to be like, okay, I want to use YouTube. I want to show behind the scenes. I want to use Instagram. I, remember I want to this. use the opportunity to really increase my opportunity being voted for because mm -hmm. my first partner sure. was not famous. And help publicize the um, show even and more. And help publicize the yeah. show. I got so penalized for that behind the scenes. Every single year, they reduced the amount of stuff I could put out. They, I was brought in for meetings. I was mm. kind of, in a weird way, slapped on the wrist for doing it like why would you do that what it, the irony of now it's like we 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 need to we have a social manager we have this like the the times change so quick and seeing your business doing it like within yeah. property you've seen that opportunity and flown with it well, well, we've been penalized now, by yeah. other people were uh, you a we little were bit talking like... about we were talking about being put in boxes yeah um in every industry you're going to be put in boxes okay yeah and we were talking about why I'm doing TV shows yes. and stuff like that. It was really simple to me. A successful real estate agent is somebody who walks down the high street of the neighborhood that they work in yeah. or the city they work in. And everyone knows who that person is. Mm -hmm. Everyone goes, oh, yeah, speak to, speak to Peter Pan or Sally Simpson. Yeah. They're, they're really good. They know everything. They know the head school teacher. They know just everybody. You know, your best chiropractor, your doctor that guy is the cheat code or that lady is the cheat code to that, that yeah. village, that city, whatever it may be. And I realized that I'm in a business where people are buying my service. The more people who know who I am, the more chance I've got to be successful. Super simple, but everyone put me in a box. 
everybody put me in a box. No, you know, you know, they, they, you, you need to, you need to be here, and you need to only work in this neighborhood, and you shouldn't create any content, and and it's dangerous for privacy reasons. And I'm like, it's not dangerous pri- pri- for privacy reasons. I'm not going to do anything that's going to cause any concern, yeah. right? Not only that, but if my clients are openly marketing property and I can get thousands and thousands of people to see it, then I'm enhancing their opportunity yeah. to sell their property oh, yeah. whilst making everyone aware of my talent, yeah? yeah, or my determination or my skill or my hard work, whatever it may be. No, well, that sounds like a win-win. <laughs> that sounds like a win-win for everybody. So we build an incubator here for personal brands to go out and deliver a real estate service. That's what DDRE is. But everyone has to understand that you will be put in a box. Mm. Even though in today's world, you have the opportunity to do this and speak to thousands and thousands and hundreds of thousands and millions of people whilst creating opportunity for yourself and adding value to anyone who's listening to you. This is an amazing opportunity not to be in a box. Yeah, yeah. I I completely agree with that. And leaning into your talent, whatever it may be, whether it's dancing or amazing communicative skills or whatever, painting, go and create content. Go and do your thing. Don't worry about the naysayers. They're always going to be there. AJ, let's take a moment to thank our sponsor, Fint. Yes, the financial investment app that makes investing easy from as little as £50 a month, Curtis. Oh, I love that. It's very good, I know. It is. But let's get back to the pod. So what, what I've been listening to you is resilience from a young age you've been taught. You've been taught good family skills, you've been taught good communication skills, yeah. and these have all been the things, and never be put in a box either. You've been taught all of these, and it's sort of, it has brought you to your success of where you are today. Yeah. And do you think that's what made you stand out in all of the places you worked in from the age of 17 years old? Yeah. Knight Frank, all these places, you climbed up, you became the best. Is this your remedy for it? I think, I know, mm. excuse me, I know that working hard putting additional effort in, truly caring about your client and your customer and going above and beyond makes a big difference. Yeah. And people notice it. Yeah. I love people and I'm a people pleaser. Yeah. And everyone says, you don't be a people pleaser. You'll never get anywhere in this world. No, you have to set boundaries. Of course you do. But for, I reckon, two decades... I've put people first. Yeah. I've put people first. I mean, I didn't earn a great living for 15 years. A great living in comparison to what I was doing. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I didn't. I was prepared to invest my time and effort to learn my skill and be at service for people. This is one thing that I'm really passionate about is champion true service. Yeah in whatever you do. If you become the best at it, you'll be phenomenally successful because the world will know about it now Mm -hmm. because we can do this sort of stuff. So when I was, I had an interesting moment when I was about 21. I've been working for three and a half, four years. I was probably taking home 15 to 20,000 pounds a year at the time. This is 2000, 2001. And then three years, your, your week, what would it look like? Oh, I was just picking up. I mean, we didn't have a computer. I mean, yep. it sounds like it sounds like I'm 400 <laughs> years old. <laughs> I was but gonna say, we, people listening to this. So, so this is what it looked like. There was a desk. Yep. There was a telephone. There was a there was a, a card box. Okay, yep. so I had a box ah, and I, I had a card. It was a B C D. It wasn't a Rolodex. <laughs> my, my colleague had a Rolodex. I didn't qualify for that. <laughs> so in the card box there was A B C D E F G. You know, yep. and the, and it will be people's boxes, uh, people's cards, and on those cards will be their name, their telephone yep. number. No mobiles. Uh, after a little while, there was mobiles in there. And then there was um, fax number. Oh, wow. Yes, yeah. yeah. And and then on the other side would be their requirements, what they're looking for, okay? And I would sit there all day, and when a new property came in, I'd go through my box, yep. and I would go, and Six I would call that box, person. Yeah. And then I would go and look at properties, and I would value them at the age of 23. You're having heart palpitations. You're getting nervous about this because you're asking someone in their 30s to... to to trust the 21 year old yeah did you feel i don't want to say small, i was petrified well, yeah. yeah i was petrified <laughs> i remember the first time i valued a property um 
I'll come to the story about being 21. Yeah, but yeah. I remember the first time I valued a property was in Sutherland Avenue, Maida Vale. And I remember sat outside in my Vauxhall Corsa, which was 900 and something CC. We love a Corsa. <laughs> Great right? car. Yeah, yeah, the first car. Right? <laughs> and, uh, and I remember sat there and perspiring in the car about, yeah. I'm about to go and tell somebody how much their property's worth. At the time, no one had this metric of pound per square foot when you're mm -hmm. valuing property. Understood, yeah. So you'd walk in and you would go, it feels like, yeah. <laughs> yeah. right? Which way is the wind blowing today? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and what else is sold? You use comparables, but it's in your head. Yeah, yeah. There was no metrics and I won it. And I won a lot. And we were working as small independent against bigger firms. And, and I thought to myself, there, well yeah, yeah, yeah. And gradually you grow with confidence. Yeah. Everything's about failure succeeding. You succeed a bit more till you hit failure. Then you learn, then you succeed a bit more. And that moment was, was a really pinnacle moment. Yeah. Um, so throwing yourself in at the deep end is super duper important. But the story I wanted to tell you was when I was 21, I was earning 15, 16,000 pounds a year, whatever it was. And I was still living at home and some friends were leaving university and I didn't qualify to go to uni. Mm -hmm. So friends were le leaving university and they were getting golden handshakes to go to insurance companies, yep. investment banks, and they were put on 21,000 pounds or 30,000 pounds a year. And I remember being at home and I was, I was good at playing football, but I was an estate agent and I was just an estate agent. Yeah. There was no pride in it. We're trying to bring pride into the industry. Mm -hmm. And I remember saying to myself, sorry, my phone's going off. I remember saying to myself, Daniel, just, just be great. Just be great. It doesn't matter what you do. And, I, and I, I had this this vision, like, and I can see it now. And the vision was of a man carving, I don't know why, carving a chair. Okay. And I said to myself, Am I losing if, the plot? <laughs> even if you're a carpenter and you're creating chairs, if you become the best out of creating something, yeah. the world will know mm -hmm. and you will be phenomenally successful. In other words, it doesn't matter what you do. No. If you become the best, you will be phenomenally successful. Be patient. Work hard. I had no idea about what was on the other side of being successful. I had no idea about private cars and chauffeurs and champagne and parties and jimmies in the south of France and boats. And <laughs> I never came from that. Yeah. So there was nothing that was pulling me towards it. What was driving me was my own ambition to just be very good at delivering a service. To keep improving and keep that quality right? of The what problem you do. now is that people have this thing in front of them and it's pulling them and coercing them to speed up and find the quick win. And there is sometimes a quick win. There is sometimes a quick way. There's, it is like snakes and ladders. But it's yeah. a rarity normally. But it's a rarity. Yeah. So do you want to rely on the, the ladder you may find really just out of fluke? Yeah, take that ladder, 100% take mm. that ladder. But remember that every ladder you find, there will be a snake. Yeah. And you'll come down. And if you want to live that life, that's no problem. Go for it. But I want to be so good. And this is where delivering a service is important. I want to be so good at whatever I do. If I'm going to put my mind to it, it's my mum really drove it into me, right? My mum used to clean the house. Let me tell you something, you could eat off the floor. Yeah. <laughs> my mum has pride through the roof. If you do a job, do it properly. Do it unbelievably yeah. well. Yeah. And and that is exactly what I do. Or well, try to. The, the value side, like we've always said, if we say yes to a job, if it's a pay job, if it's a charity job, if what, whatever it is, as soon as we've said yes, it doesn't matter what it is, we give it everything. It's the one thing that our parents have yeah. always been like. If you say yes, you do it as though it is the best thing in the world because that's the only way that people are going to remember you and value yeah. you. Plus, at the end of the day, for us personally, it would be the worst feeling ever to coming back from the job that you haven't prepared for or you've turned up late or you mm -hmm. dance competition. You lost because you weren't Shit. the fittest person in the room. Like, they are the worst losses because... You in your control. prepared to lose. Yeah. If somebody beats you because they're better than you, great. C'est la vie. You, you can learn from it. You can improve. But when it's self-inflicted, like mm -hmm. it's how do you live with yourself? Yeah. And that's a really kind of sad thing. Sometimes we see people like they're failing because they've prepared to fail. They haven't prepared to win. And that's very sad. Did you feel like working for other people then when you were at like Night Frank and all these other places that actually it was hindering you slightly? Do you feel like you 
almost couldn't have the freedom of what you wanted to do and then obviously you left and created DDRE and you have, have a, the you freedom. Have a clear goal. I can, so you can you see yeah, talk about goal. it. You know goal. what you want. I, 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 um, I'm pretty confident, mm. okay? But I'm confident of doing stuff yep. and realize that I'm good at it. If you And people will say that I'm a very confident guy. But if you ask me about stuff that I don't know about or ask me if I'm any good at darts, I'm going to say no. Yeah. Yeah. But what I do is I focus on stuff that I know I'm good at, okay? Because I see just more value in it. During my working life, I focused on my work and I've always been prepared to truly understand what makes other people successful so I can try and bring it into my sphere, mm -hmm. Yeah, right? Working in organizations, being an independent or a big corporate teaches you many things. I am 100% more professional than I ever was before I went into corporate. Okay, but my natural innate ability to be an entrepreneur has always remained there. It's always yeah. been present. It's probably given me an, a, a bit of an inch or an angle um, where I've seen opportunity faster in a corporate environment and went for it. That is, I've seen benefits from everything. Do you feel stifled? Yes. Mm -hmm. In life, you will feel stifled. And often when things happen in your life, it's not because of everybody else. It's something that I've had to learn. It's not everyone else's issue. It's also your own. So I know that when I've been in environments that have been uncomfortable, it's very easy for me to say, well, they're wrong. Or, yeah. or they're yeah. not doing something that they should be doing because this is a clear and present opportunity. But now with a bit of age and wisdom and reflection, I know that I've also created those times where I've been difficult. Mm -hmm. Whilst I see an opportunity, I've been difficult. It may not have suited other people. It may have caused elements of friction. That's not just their problem. Yeah. It's mine too. And I can see it now in conversations with people that I speak to um, that is very present everywhere we go. Yeah. Yeah, I feel like in, in business sometimes, like, I, I love doing business with people that, that are yes people. Let, let's find a way. Let's talk about this. Yeah. Why, why are we putting up barriers? Why are we making it harder than let's put it on the list? Well, no, let's do it now today. The best way to get jobs done is not to do like, oh, oh for, by Friday I'm getting it done. Well, no, what can I do today? How many hours have we got in the day? If it's on that list, prioritize it. Most important, just start taking the list off because before you know where you are, that's how you get an obscene amount of jobs done because you just do them. Yeah, just yeah. do. Yeah. But you, but I think that happens from a young age. Yeah. I'm not certain you can teach it. There are some people that work like this. And there are some people that work like this. And they work with tempo. Tempo and work is vital. It's like your heartbeat. I work a thousand miles an hour. It's insane. <laughs> I didn't know this. I thought everyone worked this way. Yeah. <laughs> Kurt said to really me, not. Kurt, Kurt was like, you do realize people don't always work like you. Like people have their own, like you said, their own temper. Their Everybody's, own Everybody's different. Everybody's different. Everybody's work finding the value different. out of people and what they do great. Just before you go anywhere, we just want to say thank you very much to listen to Freedom Impact Trust. We love your reviews, so please do leave them because it helps other people find us, doesn't it, Kurz? Yes, it does. As AJ said, comment, like, subscribe, mm. share it with a friend, share it with the entire world. Let everybody know that this is the podcast that you guys are listening to and jot down some comments of any financial advice that you want or any questions. We'll be happy to answer all of them at the best of our knowledge. Thanks again for listening, guys. We hope you've enjoyed it and we love you all. Yeah, we just want to thank our sponsors, Fint, the financial investment app, where you can invest from as little mm. as £50 a month. Yes, Curtis, £50 a month. So easy. I like it. And don't forget that it's all within three portfolios. Simplicity. It's easy. Get investing, guys. Have a great day. See you later.